Namaste and welcome to a new trauma-sensitive yoga practice. This week's practice is for overall ease, overall ease and release. Energy gets stuck in our bodies. We are energy and matter. And where that energy sort of lodges in, it changes how we feel in our physical body. Anxiety, a lot of energy. Depression and lethargy, fatigue, not so much energy. So in this practice, in a very gentle way, we will see if we can discharge a little bit of the busy energy, but yet stoke the fire for the energy that's a little heavy. I have a blanket and a big towel or pillow is just as well. I'm going to have a seat on up of this blanket. Sometimes just elevating the seat a little bit makes it a little bit more comfortable in the hips. And then we'll start in a simple cross-legged position. Now you may be more comfortable sitting in a chair, which is perfectly fine as well. You know what works best for you. And I invite you to experiment and explore this. And even at the best of days, that can be a moving target. I am very well aware of that. So we start in today's practice by simply checking in. Turning the palms towards the sky. If there is a lot of heavy energy, but down towards the body if there's a lot of anxious energy. And in this way, we begin to work with the energy. And you may not know, and that's okay. Choose the one that's most comfortable. And trust that is always the right way. Wiggling the seat a little bit from side to side. And then let the spine lengthen upward. We'll roll the shoulders up and down the back. And lengthen up through the crown of the head. If it feels safe, I invite you to close your eyes or simply keep a soft gaze down either towards your own body or just on the space in front of you. And from the body, we move inward to the breath, the next layer in, according to the yoga philosophy, our energetic layer. And as we breathe in and out, we'll do three breaths, with breath in through the nose and then Sighing, exhaling through the mouth. Please join me. One more time. Now as you breathe in and out, notice maybe there's a little bit more space in the lower abdomen to receive the in-breath, that there is more space around the trunk to breathe in an easy and comfortable way. One of the easiest meditations is simply Softly whispering, breathing in, I know I'm breathing in. And breathing out, I know I am breathing out. In and then out. In and out. If the mind is really chatty, this meditation can help quiet that chattiness down. Last week, 
I read Rumi's poem, The Guest House, where he says to meet each guest at the front door with joy and excitement, regardless of who they are, even if they are a crowd of sorrows. So as you look around in your body this week, right now, how does it feel? What are the guests that you are meeting? They don't all have to be a crowd of sorrows. Some are joyful. And in the practice of contentment, the second limb of the eight limb practice, bringing to mind something that brings joy, helps facilitate the practice of contentment. So I invite you now to place one or both hands on your heart center. I invite something to your mind's eye, to your heart space, that brings you joy. It doesn't matter what it is, your heart recognizes joy. And if the mind energy, the energy of judging becomes a little busy, just let your awareness go right back to your heart center. and the memory of thought of joy. The gladdening of the heart, holding a thought, a memory for 30 seconds changes our biochemistry within. moves us towards ease, a middle place that is neither anxious nor depressed, but ease. Take one more breath. And we'll release the hands down and take the legs up and then bounce them a little bit. And we'll switch the cross of the legs. This light was it this side. And was it this side? Generally, the one that feels a little awkward would be the other side. And if that is super awkward, go back to the first side. Perfectly fine. We start with seated cat and cow. Exhale, rounding the spine back. Contract the lower abdomen. And inhale, lengthening up through the front spine. Draw the shoulder blades together. Exhale, rounding back, contract the lower abdomen, and inhaling, draw the shoulder blades together, maybe lift the chin, exhaling, rounding the angry cat pose, and inhale, cow pose. I don't know why this is called cow pose, but so it is, it will go with it. You could call it arching. Back bendy pose. We're back at neutral. And now with the hands by the sides, let's inhale, draw the arms out and up and exhale. We'll do that two more times. Inhale, floating the arms up and exhale all the way down. Lift the chin if it's available. Really good with anxiety, with sorrow, with depression and lethargy. And now we'll take the arms up and exhale, twisting to the right, inhaling up and exhale, twisting to the left, inhaling back up and take the arms down. Let's repeat, but starting at the other side, we'll inhale, take the arms up and exhale, twisting to the left. Inhaling up and twisting to the right. Inhaling up, reaching and take the arms down. And we'll add a little side stretch. Starting the same way we did already twice. We'll inhale, take the arms up 
And as you exhale, we'll twist again to the right side. Now lift the right arm up and then reach out over the left leg. And inhaling back to center. Take the arms back up and we'll go to the other side. Twisting, floating the left arm up over the side, going as far as is comfortable for you. Inhaling the arms up and back at center. Let's do that one more time. Starting now on the left side, inhaling up. And exhale, twisting to the left. Now inhale, take the left arm up. And coming back down, exhaling. Inhale, the arms up. And exhale, right side. Inhaling, side twist bend. Inhaling up and down. Let's inhale the arms up last time, reaching up. And we'll take the arms down. Let's take the legs out in front again. And bounce. Bouncing is really good. It gets rid of the excess energy, but it also stimulates the lethargic energy. And we'll bring the soles of the feet together, Baddha Konasana. And holding on to the ankles, I'll turn to the side and Lifting up through the back body, sitting tall. You know, just have a little bouncy, 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 bouncy here. Letting the knees bounce, not in a forced way or rigid. Comfortable. Comfortable and easy. That's a yoga practice. No strain, no pain. It's your friend. All right, let's take the knees together. Take them out one more time. And let's travel into tabletop. If your knees are chatty, that's my term for uncomfortable, then I can use a blanket or a pillow and place it under my knees. We're in tabletop. We return to our cat and cow pose. Toes can be tucked under. They can be flat or long. And we'll inhale. Heart, lengthen the heart forward. And exhale, round and draw the tailbone towards the knees. And we'll inhale, lifting up again. And exhale, rounding. Moving in a way that's easy for your body. Back and forth. Easy peasy. And let's come back to a neutral. And then draw the seat back towards the heels. Child's pose. And you may find that you want to stay a little bit higher. You can stack your wrists with your palms for your head, or you can stay with your elbows down, but let the head be lifted. Remember, it is what feels best for you. And then from here, we'll take the arms forward, so now my, my forearms are still down, and I'll inhale up to Firebird. We practice that in a few sessions. And exhale, we draw back down again. Inhaling, Firebird. And exhale, back down again. So very much like the cat and cow, Spine flexes and extends. I set that backwards. Now we are flexing forward. And now as we inhale up, we are extending. Let's do that one more time. Coming back. And inhaling, we are up. Tabletop. And if this is uncomfortable on the wrist, so we can move the hands slightly further forward. 
and that may alleviate the discomfort. And we'll shake our tail from side to side. And back to neutral. Now here, spinal balance. We'll start by taking the right leg back, toes on the ground, and lift the leg up. And that may be just plenty for today. Let's release the knee down. And we'll take the left back. Straighten the leg, maybe lifting it up. And we'll take that down and release down. And you can shake out any time in between or come back and rest in child's pose if your body says, I need a rest. We take care of our bodies. Now let's take the right arm forward. Reaching, lengthening. And we'll take that hand down. Reset it down, feel the palm connecting to the floor. And we'll take the left arm forward. I'm simply checking in with my body right now. Not a big hairy deal, shaking it out again. Resting if I choose to. And now we will cross pattern. I'll take the right leg back again. And take the left arm forward. And then inhale, maybe lift the right leg up. It can stay down. And as you exhale, let's bring elbow to knee. Inhale, extending. Exhale, coming in again. And maybe one more time. Elbow and knee. And everything comes down. Shaking that out. And we'll take the twist back down into our child's pose and give our wrists a little rest. Too much of a good thing is not a good thing. But we take a break when we want to. And squid fingers. And let's come back up again. So this time we'll take the left leg back and the right arm forward. And again, modify the hand can stay down. They don't have to come up all the way. The right way is a way that feels right for you today. As you exhale, elbow to knee, inhale forward. Maybe the leg lift, the leg down. When you exhale, we let the knee Elbow come back together. And let's do that two more times. One. And two. Extend and everything comes back down. And wiggle. Wiggle. And again. Child's pose. Letting everything rest down in whatever way is comfortable for you. We'll take two more breaths. And then we'll travel forward to crocodile pose. Looking at my my cheat sheet here, making sure that I'm following what I planned. Sometimes I change my recipes along the way. So crocodile, feet are slightly wider than the hip. And again, let my head rest on the back of my hands. Crocodile is a really cool pose because it helps us bring the breath into our low back, our sacrum. We often hold a lot of tension. And if you're not sure, you can always take a hand back and you can feel. And so a little expansion, a little letting go maybe. 
So now from here, taking the right leg down alongside, I'm going to turn my head facing towards the left elbow. Very similar to what we just did in our sometimes called hunting dog pose. Opposite. So as I inhale, begin by pressing the hips down and lift the right leg. And lower it down. Let's take a full breath in and out. And then as I inhale, I'll press my hips down again and then lift the head and my left arm. And slowly lower down. Take a full breath in and out. I invite you to do the two together. And of course, you may say, nope, I'm just going to do the arm. I'm just going to do the leg or I'm just going to breathe right here because that feels good for me right now. You may or may not follow me. It is only an invitation, remember. So on an in-breath, pressing the hips down, lift the right leg. Maybe the left arm and head. And exhale, slowly come down. Taking a full breath in and out. We'll do it two more times. Inhale, pressing the hips down, lifting right leg, left arm, and slowly lower down. Full breath in and out. And one more time. Inhaling, pressing hips down, arm and leg. And we release. And now here, just gently press the left arm into the floor. Take the right up and we'll swap it out. My left arm are down. Now I'll look towards my right elbow. Starting as we did before in a gentle way. With the leg only. So on in breath, press the hips down and lift. Left leg. Slowly lower down. And we'll take a full breath in and out. And on an in-breath, I'll again anchor my hips and lift right arm and head and slowly lower down. We'll take a pause breath. And then maybe put both together or maybe experiment with one or the other, left leg and right arm, your call. As we inhale, pressing the hips down and left. Left, what wants to left? Leave the rest down. And we work again on an in breath, inviting. And releasing down. Buffer breath. One more. And releasing down. Sliding the left arm up. And I'm back in crocodile. Forehead resting on the back of the hands. And swinging the hips from side to side if there is a little tension in the low back. And then slowly, let's lift the head, looking forward, looking forward. It's a little cobra sphinx hybrid. Lowering down.
And we'll go tuck the toes under and then creep them up towards the nose. They're not going to go very far. And on an inhalation, gently press the heels back to the legs and gauges and lifting the head and the heart. Lift the head and the heart like a rising cobra. And slowly lower back down. And pausing. And we'll do that again. Tucking the toes under. Creep them up towards the nose. And then pressing the heels back. Come on, my legs are firm. And pressing the forearms down. Inviting the heart to lengthen forward while the heels are pressing back. And we let go. Breathing in and out. And if I was ready to press back to puppy again, rolling the shoulders up and down the back and pushing back, stretch the hips back comfortably. And then that got us ready to come on to our back. I'm pausing. Checking in with the body from when we started. The breath and the energy in the body. Matter and energy. Here, ready for bridge pose. With the feet about hip width apart. Tap them down. There they are. Tap the heels down. There they are. We can't really see them. So we're going to assume that they are where we left them and still attached to our legs. So tapping can sometimes wake them up and they can also really fire up the hamstrings. And then from here, on an in-breath, press the feet down and lift the hips. And exhale, slowly lower back down. Just take a full breath in and out. And we'll repeat two more times. Pressing up, lift the hips, and exhale, lowering down. Take a full breath in and out. Pressing up again. And we lower down. And now after a full breath in and out, if your low back is saying, I really like a little bit more stretch, drawing the knees in and rock from side to side. Sometimes if we move too fast from a back bend into a forward movement, the back can begin to get a little scared. So it will might cramp up or spasm. So we want to make sure that we are not moving too fast. I'm taking my hands to my knees and I'm rocking the knees back and forth. And 
gently release the feet down towards the floor. Sliding, I'm taking the arms out to the side. I'll take my feet a little bit wider than my hips. And the sometimes called the windshield wiper twist is really nice to help bring out any residual tension. So I invite you to gently inhale and let the knees go down to one side. And exhale, slowly float back up. Inhaling down to the other side. And exhale, floating back up. Make it easy. And if you prefer to breathe, going down on an out breath, coming up on an in breath, that is fine too. Work again with both energy and matter. Let's do it one more time to each side. And as we come up, we will again draw the knees in. This time we'll take the legs to the sky and we'll shake it all out. Shake, you can say it with me. Shake, let all that you don't want be gone. And from now, or from here, we'll simply hug the knees in. And if it's available on your neck and shoulders, we'll hug the chin to the chest, tight, tight, tight. And releasing into Shavasana. So taking the legs out along the mat. Settling in and checking too. Does your body center line, sternum and belly button? You can't really see where the nose is. Is everything placed in a balanced and even way from right to left? Sometimes we think we are centered, but we may be slightly off to one side. And by placing the body in a centered way physically also helps it become centered emotionally and spiritually, emotionally in particular. So mind and heart space as well. Are you comfortable? Are you at ease? Maybe a blanket under the head or under the knees. So it's okay to not be sure. It's okay to experiment. Unless we try, we won't know. You will know when you're comfortable as the soft feathers of your body will simply begin to lie down, settle in. And from here, we can bring the awareness to the breath. As you breathe in and out, sensing your body. As if there is an imprint of you the edge where you meet the rest of the world. Feeling 
your head, your skull resting on the floor. As you inhale, sensing the skull. And as you exhale, smile to your skull. Now sensing your right arm, your right arm and your right shoulder. Breathing in, being aware of your shoulder and arm. And as you breathe out, smile to your right shoulder and your right arm. As you breathe in, become aware of your left shoulder and your left arm. And as you breathe out, smile to your left shoulder and left arm. Become aware of your heart and your lungs. Breathing in, feel sense the heart and the lungs and as you exhale smile to your heart and lungs inhaling awareness and exhaling tenderness and kindness and joy moving the awareness to the lower half of the trunk Breathing in, sensing the abdomen, the low back, maybe the pelvis. And as you breathe out, smile. Smile to your body. I'm feeling your right leg. Right there. Maybe there's some warmth. Maybe there's some prickly sensation. Maybe there's discomfort. Acknowledging all of that with awareness on the in-breath and as you exhale, smiling to your right leg. The leg, the ankle, the foot, all being wrapped in your inner smile. Traveling to your left leg, sensing it on the floor, breathing in and out. Again, what are the sensations? Maybe heat, pressure, tingly, is comfort. Not as right, not as wrong. It just is. Sensing it all on the in-breath and as you exhale, smiling to all those guests. As you breathe in and out, sensing your entire body. And as you exhale, smiling, smiling to your entire body. And then I invite you to begin to gently deepening your breath maybe wiggling fingers and toes. We'll bend up the knees, rock the knees gently from side to side. Easy, make it easy. We'll roll all the way over onto one side. We'll use our arms and hands to press up 
into a comfortable seated posture. Again, you may like to sit up on the blanket where we started, or you may be quite comfortable sitting like this, or you might like to travel to sit in a chair, or you can see where this is going. You may want to lie back down again. It is whatever brings you joy right now. I invite you to join me as we close this practice by one of my favorite mantras, Om Shanti, 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 Om. Om is like a call, it's like, that says, listen, or for it is so. And Shanti means peace. And with the three Shantis, I'm calling for peace in the world. I'm calling for peace in my life. And I'm calling for peace within my heart space, my mind and my heart spaces. So we direct, we set the intention. You may set any way you want the intention where you wish to share your heart's light inside and out. Let's take a deep breath in. Om Shanti, 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 Om. Thank you. Namaste.